Okay. Hey guys, name is Alex. Uh, I've traveled around the world and worked in a plethora of IT companies and ended up as a .NET developer at PGS Software. Uh, I've been told that it's a good idea to tell something personal about myself. So I like going to escape rooms. You know, solving puzzles is always nice and fun. And I'm really glad and grateful that I get uh, to do that as a chance of my daily job as well. And I guess we'll jump straight in to the presentation. Okay. So today I'm going to talk to you about ways you can increase your impact as a software developer. There is something other than writing better code and being, or being more technically proficient. And as with many other things in life, I think we'll start off with a Spiderman quote, namely that with great power comes great responsibility. And there's actually an equation that we can extract from that, that great power equals great responsibility. And we can see that we have great on both sides. So we can just get rid of that and we'll end up with power equals responsibility, which uh, makes sense. And then we can actually continue on with our basic math class. We can reverse that and conclude that responsibility equals power is also true, which if you stop and think about it, makes a lot of sense since, you know, when you gain new responsibilities, you become that bit harder to replace for your organization, giving you negotiating power and leverage. But you know, the wording is kind of menacing and I feel like we're going in a bit of a wrong direction. So let's rephrase this. And we'll end up on the fact that giving responsibility is actually empowering. And in fact, to prove my point, I'm gonna go and tackle it from a bit of an other angle. Uh, I'd ask you to remember how did it make you feel the last time that somebody redid a piece of work that was assigned to you, thus quote unquote, relieving you of the responsibility for it. Theoretically, that should be nice, right? Because you're no longer the one to blame if something goes badly. But, you know, on the contrary, what it usually makes people feel like is like not taking up additional work, not being proactive, not trying to suggest new ideas. It's generally pretty bad. And so having determined that responsibility is a very important aspect, uh, let's see or let's delve into and see who is the person who holds the most responsibility or power in a software team, and usually it's the TL. And there is a very important distinction to make as uh, at least in PGS software, we have two TLs. So we have tech leads and team leads. Team leads are more sort of mentors and tech leads are people who are technically responsible for you know the technical part of the project and are leading the team. And tech leads are the ones who I'm gonna talk about today. And so let's think what are the usual responsibilities that a tech lead has. Uh, one of them, the first one that comes to mind is obviously making wider technical decisions at scale. So affecting the choice of technologies and frameworks, uh, making sure that the code base is healthy and that the engineering standards are being followed. The other one is negotiating with business analysts, uh, you know, product owners, uh, product, uh, project managers, et cetera, et cetera. Some of the DLs I know can have their natural area of habit that changed to Microsoft Teams meeting and nobody will bat an eye. Uh, the next one is intra-team communication and coordination. So let's imagine that your team depends on Team Apple, Team Apple depends on Team Bananas, and Team Bananas is going bananas, as the name suggests. And so what do you do then? Usually it's the DL who is like a person or a point of contact for those sort of coordination efforts. And then quite counterintuitively, at least for me, the biggest impact uh, of a TL comes from resolving personal issues, you know, enabling engineers, onboarding new team members, et cetera, et cetera. That's the most important part to me since I'd much rather have like a hard technical problem to solve uh, in front of me rather than having a personal conflict with one of my team members. Uh, and so a question I'd like uh, to ask you is how would your software team fare if your TL got hit by a bus and was out uh, in a hospital for a month? Would you have somebody capable of stepping up and delivering at a similar rate or would your team fall into chaos and become paralyzed? Uh, one of the previous, uh, on one of the previous jobs I worked on, uh, was a bit different, but still kind of the same. The scrum master decided to change jobs. Uh, and so while waiting for a replacement, you'd expect the team to, you know, self-organize and schedule all the necessary meetings, but they didn't. And they, that obviously affected, you know, delivery dates and all that sort of stuff. So that team wasn't exactly a functional one, uh, a functional one out to have multiple leaders and people who can step up and that other can rely on. And so uh, scaling your team to multiple leaders is a lot like growing a boat. 
I'm not going to tell you exactly how similar it is. You're going to have to figure that one out on your own, but uh, I will tell you how to approach leadership from both the top perspective. So like from management and being the tech leader yourself and the bottom perspective. So as a developer or as a member of the team. Uh, the top one, or the first thing I'd like to mention as a manager uh, is to delegate. I know it's been like, it's a topic that's been beating over to death, but, and I know that people still have problems with it, uh, myself included. Uh, I have this urge to, you know, make things perfect, to uh, always step in and uh, correct somebody, but we have to resist that urge. Uh, the benefit of your underling actually learning something and delivering and owning the work on their own is that much higher than, you know, delivering something imperfect or not finishing a task which can be finished in the next sprint. Uh, you're not inhuman and you can't keep track of everything. So at some point you have to delegate and, you know, pick your battles. Uh, and for that, there is also, like, you can't come in and give a newcomer some impossible task that they're going to have hard trouble even starting. Um, so the thing that work, has worked for me the best to determine whether the person is ready for a task or not is to give them a quiz. Like, I know we're not in a university or high school anymore, but it actually works. You obviously don't drop the quiz on them out of the blue and just give it to them. Um, you can give them the quiz in a one day prior and then give them hints to the reading material or people they can contact. And then you go over the quiz with them, quiz with them uh, in the next day, and then see if they're actually up to the task and if, whether they can actually do that. That way, they'll own the problem more. They'll come up with their own creative solutions, and they'll be able to ask questions and actually deliver on a task. The next one is let people show you how smart they are. Uh, this is basically about having sessions where teammates can share ideas and think about something abstract and new. Uh, currently in our project, we have every third sprint dedicated to non-feature work where we explore ways to improve the code base and just play around with things. Companies like Google famously have 20% of their time uh, set to explore topics which developers think they'll, that will benefit Google the most. So compliment people on new ideas, let them show initiative and experiment and give them some time to actually work on things which are not strictly feature related. The third and the final point in this slide is to make sure that others know the why of the features. Uh, this will let people uh, who are closer to the problem and thus have more information and more context in it, uh, see whether the problem can be solved in a more efficient way, be it with you know, less resources or making it more uh, like future-proof or making it easier to actually achieve the thing that they're looking for. All of us remember clients uh, making demands for features that they don't actually need. Uh, and so when you are not capable of realizing that, you would like to have a person who is not behaving like a zombie and just uh, doing whatever is, uh, he or she is being told uh, and actually looks into, OK, am I doing, am, is the thing I'm doing actually achieving the goal? Is there a better way to do that? And that might save the business a lot of money and you a lot of time. Next up is what to do as a software developer uh, to increase your impact through leadership. Uh, the first one is care for others. I know it sounds kind of cheeky and cliche, but uh, some days we, as you know, uh, underlings don't really see that as our responsibility to care for other developers. That's something that mentors or tech leads or project managers should do. Uh, but I felt that this has been one of the most impactful things in my career. Uh, caring for others uh, actually implicitly makes them care for yourself as well. Uh, the thing I'd advise you, which is like actual practical advice, is to set up one-on-one -on -one sessions with your teammates. I know that's usually something that a line manager would do, but you can do that as well. You know, you can ask them what motivates them, what kind of tasks they like working on, maybe something uh, quirky or something not job-related about them. That will build relationships, and then you can actually go into plannings or into some sessions and say, yes, this person likes working and those sort of problems. So let's give it to them. I actually had something like that happen to myself where one of my teammates were rather, was rather shy and he has many other uh, software developers like solving puzzles and working on you know hard algorithmic problems. And we had a task like that on the board, which was kind of overdone on the priority and another task was being assigned to that person. 
Uh, and so I stepped in and said, okay, you can assign that task to me and the person can go and do that hard algorithmic problem, which leads to you know him being more happy while working there and me being happy because I was able to help someone. Next up is uh, look at the big picture. This ties in with the third point from the last slide, but I think it's very important to reiterate and it's the one where I probably was the most of my time on. Um, so think how your story fits into the big picture, build a chain from your actual story up to what the business gets out of it. So like how people make money or what's the end goal. Uh, if you notice any inefficiencies or way to do it better or ways to make it more future-proof, just mention it during your next status meeting. And then next up, uh, prioritize and execute. Uh, as developers, we sometimes feel swamped with tasks and end up doing something that might be good or beneficial, but that's not great or not the best use of our time. You know, you really have to question yourself whether that refactoring of the class is going to serve the team better uh, than enabling or unblocking one of your teammates. Uh, I personally use a, an ABCD E calendar where A is something that you have to do, B is something you should do, C is something you could do, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there are also a bunch of variations for that, like the Eisenhower matrix, simple to-do lists, uh, and a bunch of others. My suggestion would be to just experiment and find out what the one that suits you the most. So thank you a lot and see you later. Cheers.